Welcome back to my animal education series. Today I'm at the Lehigh Valley Zoo with Richard. Hello. Hello. I see that we have some camels behind us. Yes, dromedary camels. What is the difference between um, one humped camels and two humped camels? Well, the one humped camel is the dromedary camel. They originally came from uh, the Arabian area, area of uh, Africa and the Middle East. Uh, today, it's considered that there are no more wild dromedaries. All of them have at some point been domesticated. Some of them are feral, they've gone back to the wild, but they came from domesticated stock. Uh, the other camel uh, that you're referring to is the Bactrian camel, of which there are at least two species. Uh, they're from uh, Central Asia, Mongolia, and that area. Then we have a bunch of weird cows behind us. Uh, that's his drinking, <laughs> her drinking. Uh, there are a few other camels in the world. Uh, llamas and alpaca are domestic versions of uh, guanacos, which is a wild camel in South America, and there's also the kunas in South America, which neither of, of which have bumps. What kind of environment do um, these dromedary camels have? Generally, they live in very uh, sparsely uh, vegetated areas, even desert. They are very good at eat, at finding food to eat. Uh, they'll eat anything, even plants with thorns. They, they, they have, don't care. It's like, I need to eat. They have very tough mouths, and they need to eat. Yep. What is the hump used for? The hump is a uh, fat storage. A lot of people are uh, informed that it contains water, which it actually does not. Uh, it is a, it is fat storage, which will break down when they haven't had food or water for a length of time, and that does help hydrate them. How long can they go without food or water? Uh, easily 10 days. So they can go quite a bit? Yes. In search for food and water, how far do these camels travel for? They will travel great distances, and that's been used to humans' advantage to do things like caravans in both Asia and in the uh, uh, Middle East. As you said, like, the, most of these camels are domesticated. Like, how exactly do you domesticate an animal, an animal like this? Well, you, it's just probably similar to horses. You catch them and you break them, train them, uh, and they were so valuable. Everything on a camel has been used. Uh, they use their skins for tents. They use their meat. They use their milk. Uh, their droppings are so dry that they can immediately be burned as fuel. They have a bunch of different purposes. Yes. And they're well designed for living in places like the desert where you have uh, sandstorms and such. If you look, they have very large, uh, long eyelashes to keep sand out of their eyes and they have muscles with which they can close their nostrils and their ears. So a bunch of different adaptations for surviving. Absolutely. Their feet are fairly large and they're soft so that when they go on the ground it spreads out and covers as much area as possible so that you don't sink into the sand, that you can basically walk on top of it. Sort of the same effect as a snowshoe. You know that they eat a bunch of tough, tough foods, so what do you feed them here? Actually here they, they have it pretty good. They do get hay. We also feed them, again, a, a grain that's designed to give the nutrients that camels will need. Uh, plus they do natural uh, grazing out here and browsing. They will eat leaves off the of trees and such. As I said before this video, um, they love leaves. They do love leaves, especially these maple leaves. Well, thank you so much, Richard, for telling us about these dominant camels. You're welcome. And if you guys enjoyed this week's episode, don't forget to leave a big thumbs up down below and subscribe to my channel.